Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with another non-limited edition video. This is regular products available all times. However, I am using the just released Distress watercolor pencils. Lots of you asking me about these. <laughs> they literally just got here. So this is going to be just a very brief first impression. I'm not going to do anything in depth because um, I, I literally just got them. So there's three sets. If you want like the nitty gritty details and all the info, I highly, highly, highly recommend watching Tim Holt's video on his YouTube channel. He went into just l all the info about these. Just the reasons and the explanations and the just everything, everything. Plus, he will he had said in his video that his like maker team will ha be having posts. I think it's like every every weekday throughout September. It's timholtz.com. Go there. All you will find all the info because with all the stress products, there is a lot of info. So anyway, there will be tons. Um, as of right now. I like them. This is the only thing I've used them on so far. <laughs> Honestly, like these were sent to me um, because I work with Simon Says Stamp. Heidi sent these to me. Thank you so much, Heidi. These were, I was going to order them regardless because I was like, oh, pre-colors, must own. So I would have ordered them. My thing being, I'm not the biggest fan of color, watercolor pencils um, because yeah, I just usually I'm like, why? Why do I need to use a watercolor pencil when I can just use, you know, inks, watercolors, my Karen Brush Marker Pros, which I've done a million videos on. However, the benefit with these are one, they're distress colors, which there's a lot of distress colors that are pretty unique um, that I have never come across with other products. You know what I mean? So that right, that alone I, that was why I was going to order them because I'm like, I love my distress colors. You know, I've got my inks and my paints and my oxides and my sprays. This is just another element of that. Um, so that was like the first thing. The second, I would have ordered them anyway because I was like, oh, again, pretty colors. <laughs> but one thing I will say, I really like I did just a light scribbling. I stamped this image. Like, let's get back to the card. I stamped this image. This is from the mom's spring flowers. This came out some time ago from Simon. I'm pretty sure I've done at least a couple videos using this set. It's large floral. You guys know I love it. I stamped it onto distress watercolor paper and I actually stamped on the textured side on purpose just because and I stamped it with nocturne ink and then my first layer with these I s just scribbled on the watercolor pencils and I had used kitsch flamingo, uh, picked raspberry, and crackling campfire. And I didn't press very hard. I just did like a light scribble as you could see there in the video. And then I used my little water brush and moved everything around. And the one thing I really like about this is when you use a light hand like I did at first, you do get light color. Like they're not crazy intense, you know, which I know it sounds a little weird, but I, I personally like that because I've said this in many videos. I have a very heavy hand. I cannot help but like oversaturate things or just all the things which is fine but when I want things to be sort of lighter and airy I struggle <laughs> so I was like oh I like I like that so I went in though and did a second layer with just the picked raspberry pencil and I'm holding the pencil and I'm just basically picking up the color f directly from the pencil with my water brush and I really like that too like I was like oh this is this is nice like it's amazing how much color you pick up with this little water brush you know just from the end of this pencil so I again I'm I'm enjoying these I do not think for me personally that I will color in this way like scribbling all the color on with these pencils um only because and this is this is again a very personal thing I don't like um when I have to do any sort of coloring with a color pencil or a watercolor pencil the, specifically, you generally have to apply a fair bit of pressure, you know, to get the color down and to do large florals and these sorts of things. And I can't physically do that anymore. I quit using, you know, it used to be a thing way back in the day to use. We always used to use, you know, do a lot of color pencil coloring and then, you know, Gamsol and all that stuff. And you guys, I haven't done that in 
literal years and years and years. And it's because I have borderline carpal tunnel. And I have managed to hold off on <laughs> it getting worse by not doing things to aggravate it. One being that type of coloring. Like if it requires pressure, I ain't doing it. That's also why I don't do like super, super heavy ink blending. Anything like that that's putting on pressure on my hands and wrists and shoulders. No. So I do love though doing that light scribble, pulling out the color and then picking it up from the, from the color, the watercolor pencil itself. So I was like, oh, I'm going to play with this more. So that's what I did with the greens. I had mixed, I think it was crushed olive and peeled paint, I think. So the other thing with these is they are very heavily pigmented and with pigments, they do obscure stamp lines. It's the same thing. Like if you're coloring with oxides, you know, if I'd stamp this image and then colored like watercolored over it with oxides without heat embossing it, um, the stamp lines get obscured a bit. Not the end of the world. Usually doesn't really phase me at all. Normally I would have just re-stamped this and it would have been fine, but because I wasn't really thinking about that and planning ahead, <laughs> I couldn't do that. I couldn't line it back up in my Misty. And I, I loved how the colors turned out and just all of it. So instead, I, I traced this entire image out. It honestly didn't take that long. I just used a multi-liner. And I kind of laughed. I was like, man, I used to do this so much back in the day, like tracing things, using like a light source. I used to have, a, in fact, I might still have it in a box somewhere in my old light box. Um... The thing I loved about this, though, like retracing it, it's obviously not perfect, but I'm not worried about that. But also in some ways, I was like, it's like I drew it myself. So I can be like, I drew this. <laughs> and again, it wasn't necessary. It still looked fine, but I do like how much more intense it is by tracing it. There are some designers, I think like Kelly Taylor comes to mind. I think she still does that. She's do like, she does very, um, lots of like layer and dimension with her coloring and then I, she used to I haven't had time to like watch recent videos but she would trace out you know the images afterwards and it always just made because I was always like man her images really pop and yeah it's because she would take the time to do that and it looks fabulous so depending on the mood you know it works so after I was done tracing around everything added splatter of course I didn't add regular perfect pearl splatter this time though I was I was going to be adventurous I used gold <laughs> So really, it could be gold perfect pearl or you could use like the Starry Nights Gonzai Tombi palette that I love to use. Either one is totally fabulous. But I mix the perfect pearl powder with water. Again, perfect pearl powder does have a binder in it that is activated with water. So that splatter will not wipe off, doesn't go anywhere. Again, don't lick your artwork. Um, yeah, yeah. So did all my splatter. My go-to sentiment, of course, Simon's bold thanks way for die that I topped with matte gold cardstock. Love chef's kiss. Favorite die cut sentiment. So I'd stack that together with a couple layers of white cardstock. And then the inside of my card, I put my card base inside my Misty, put a bit of post-it tape there at the score line. And then I inked up this big spring flowers image again with kitsch flamingo uh, oxide ink and stamp that onto the inside of the card. So then once that was stamped, I decided to stamp a sentiment from the extra talkative stamp set. I'm really loving this set. I think it's still on reserve at Simon because it's been super popular with good reason. It's wonderful. I just, I love the mix of sentiments and the size of them. Fabulous. So stamp that on the inside with Nocturne ink. Um, this panel I trimmed down. I think I took a quarter inch off all the sides. So it's three and three quarters by five inches, I think. And then I trimmed down some of Simon's dull pink cardstock to just slightly larger to mat that. And it just gives a nice little border. And then this time for my foam tape, I'm using the eye crafter. I think it's called, um, from thermal thermal web. This is their one sixteenth inch foam tape, which I had purchased. And I was like, I want like, i assumed it was the same thickness as Simon's Big Mama foam tape that I'm obsessed with. Simon's Big Mama foam tape is still half as thick as that. I had to do some googling because I'm like the way it's appearing I'm like I know my fractions you know. Simon's Big Mama foam tape is 132 of an inch like 132nd of an inch whereas this foam tape is 116th of an inch just 
for reference. So Simon's is still my thinnest foam tape, my holy grail, you know, just I love it. This is a good one though as well. So it's another option, but it isn't as thin. So, you know, anyway, pop that on with the foam tape. I added a sentiment strip from the All the Thanks uh, sentiment strip pack and then just a little bit of bling, some Studio Cadia round iridescent gems because I love and then I paired this with one of Simon's metallic doll pink envelopes and that finished it off. So stay tuned. I will have more videos using these watercolor pencils as I have more time to play with them. I'll have a ton more videos coming this month too. We're not even halfway through September and September and all the fun things. So I'm sure I will have plenty more times to use these watercolor pencils and videos. <laughs> And then, of course, I will have links to everything in the description box below the video as well as on my blog. So you can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. I very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.